Hey guys, how you doing? I hope you're doing okay. Not going to go through the full details here. This type of topic is a little bit different to most that appear on this channel, but it is involving a crime, we believe. Black Lives Matter secretly used $6 million in donations to buy a luxurious 6,500 square foot mansion with a mere seven bedrooms, a parking lot for only 20 cars, and they bought this in Southern California, and they've been um, filming YouTube videos there. So here is a little clip from one of the YouTube videos that were made. They seem to have a nice uh, bottle of champers there, and it's been nicely decorated. This is a $6 million mansion with a mere 6,500 square foot of space within it. Um, these are the founders, Patrice Cullors, on the left, Alicia Garza, and uh, LA Faction founder, Melina Abdullah. If I understand correctly, these two guys have since left the organization, BLM. Uh, should I say left? Should I say run from the organization? Uh, but we'll have a look through part of the article. The leaders of the Black Lives Matter organization allegedly laid out a whopping $6 million that was donated to the activist group to buy a 6,500 square foot Southern California mansion, according to published reports. Um, news of the 2020 purchase was reported by New York Magazine on Monday, as the organization allegedly hoped to keep the house's existence a secret. Despite three of its former leaders reportedly filming a series of videos dining and drinking champagne outside the estate last spring. And there, as I say, is one still from one of their videos. Um, Black Lives Matter, you donate millions and millions of dollars to this organization, to this activist organization. Why would you do that? I wouldn't do that. I mean... I don't want to get overly political on this channel, but I wouldn't donate to these guys, nor really anyone else. If I were to donate some money to this organization, I would not expect them to spend that money on housing for themselves. Expensive dining. I wouldn't expect that. I would have thought it would go through to, I don't know, the black community in one capacity or another. You know, building up neighborhood community centers, um, uh, enhancing a playground for the kitty winkles in a black community or such. You know, something to help the black community. I would have thought if you were to donate to an organization called Black Lives Matter, I wouldn't have thought it would go to pay towards yet another mansion. I say yet another because the founder... I believe I'm correct in saying has already been found to have purchased, I believe, four, maybe it was six properties. So I can't say for sure. I really don't know. But I think the allegations are that a little bit of fraud might have occurred. A little bit of <coughs> embezzlement um, of your good funds. Not my funds. It's unclear exactly where the opulent property is located because it is hidden behind an LLC purchase. You know, I'm not going to pretend to fully understand that, but essentially it seems to be, uh, you know, an, a, a tax scam or something like that is my speculation, allegedly, of course, uh, in my layman's opinion. But, you know, some kind of accountancy trick or other to try to cover up the details as much as possible in regards to the ownership of the property perhaps the purchase price and seemingly even the location according to new york magazine it boasts more than a half dozen bedrooms and bathrooms multiple fireplaces a sound stage a swimming pool a bungalow well of course you must have a bungalow if you can have a mansion you have to have a bungalow and parking for more than 20 cars is that all come on the news comes as the foundation continues to face federal scrutiny for the alleged misuse of donated funds. Yeah, well, okay, well, good. Let's hope it's proper scrutiny. Let's hope it's not just like, um, 
pretend scrutiny, you know, puppeteering going on. Oh, yeah, we're going to invest this, the, investigate these guys when really they don't investigate. They give you a pass for whatever reason. Not going to, I'm going to hold my tongue. I could expand more, but I'm not going to. Um, and it comes on the heels of widespread criticism for Black Lives Matter co-founder Patrice Coulours, who resigned last May in the wake of revelations that she had spent millions on a slew of lavish homes. So, I mean, I don't know. To me, these guys have been caught with their hands in the till. That's how it seems to me. As an outsider who doesn't know all of the facts nor understand them, that's how it seems to me. This Patrice Colors, the co-founder of Black Lives Matter, has purchased multiple, multiple lavish homes. Did she house members of the black community in those lavish homes? Was that the reason? To have conferences for Black Lives Matter supporters or whatever? Nope. No, don't think so. Could be wrong. Don't think so. I think she bought the lavish homes because she wanted to own lavish homes. So she took your money. That's how I see the situation. But what do I know? The seven bedroom estate was purchased by a man two weeks after Black Lives Matter received a $66.5 million dollars uh, donation from its fiscal sponsor in October 2020. So to me, I think you guys, and perhaps I said that in a bit of an arrogant manner, I don't know, but uh, certainly we, I'll include myself, we need to be aware that Black Lives Matter is a major corporation. I mean, maybe te technically it isn't a corporation at all, but in essence, if it's receiving donations in the tens of millions and if those donations perhaps add up over the course of a year to the hundreds of millions these are incredibly high amounts of money to be giving these organizations i don't know to me in my experience for the time i've been on this planet um it seems to me where there is money there is greed and uh, it seems to me there are there is money here and it seems to me that there might just be a little bit of greed going around that's my take on it i'm gonna wrap things up at this point has that been of interest to you probably not i mean i've not gone into things uh very thoroughly i don't really want to it gets a little bit too boring i'm not in a position to prove the situation one way or another so i'd rather just keep things uh basic at this point and just let you know let's remind ourselves of these situations let's try not to forget this one i'm glad that this um situation has sprung back into prominence um i would like to see these guys face proper actual financial scrutiny um not only because i'm not a fan of the black lives matter movement i i think it's well perhaps i shouldn't say what i think of it i mean I think it has been designated a domestic terrorist organization. I could be wrong on that, but I think uh, certainly that's something that has been looked at. I'm not a fan of the organization. I'm not a fan of any of it, to be honest with you. And I'm not going to say exactly why. But uh, I don't know. It just seems all pointless to me. And it also just seems like virtue signaling. And it seems I'm right. It seems my judgment is once more validated when we see situations like this where you know here i am thinking oh this is completely pointless and unnecessary to have an organization uh, whose main thrust is to tell us remind us 50 million times that black lives matter yeah hello yeah we fucking know we're not idiots you know um and in the meantime they get such social prominence worldwide despite their connections to massive devastating riots throughout america um and you know it seems that i'm right they've been doing this for the virtue signaling aspect and for the money grabbing aspect there's no actual virtue going on here 
there's nothing actually going on here other than grabbing clout, grabbing status, and grabbing cold hard cash. I'll thank you for your time.